Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, Principal Atmospheric Scientist at Nutrient Ag Solutions, and I want to thank you for watching this weekly ag weather update brought to you by the Farm Credit Associations of North Carolina. Well, it's good for us to start off with a look at what we had on Sunday in terms of the flow of the atmosphere. So this is a map that's kind of animating for you the position of the gesture. It was doing something just like this. Now, a major feature that helped drive some of the heat that we saw in the Carolinas on, on Sunday was this bigger ridge that's pushing up into here. But helping it out was this upper level trough that was leaving the parts of the northeast. And underneath it, we saw some really, really high temperatures. As we get into this video, we need to figure out how long we're going to be seeing temperatures like this. Look at Sunday afternoon temperatures here. We saw across parts of the Carolinas a lot of temperatures getting way into the 90s, approaching triple digit heat in some locations. In fact, everywhere under, remember that flow pattern was doing this. So everywhere under that ridge, we just saw some big time heat pushing across the midsection of the country. And for many of us here, this is the first time we've actually seen some warmth like this. But our question is, what are our temperatures doing in the longer term? And when are we bringing precipitation back into the, into the picture after what we saw over the last couple of days? Well, let's at least saw what that flow uh, pattern of the jet stream did. So this is sun up through sundown on Sunday. And we remember, we're looking at something that's doing a bit like that in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Now, around this upper level low that's moving through parts of the northeast United States, it did drag a front right in through this area. You can see it. And look, on that front, some storms popped up. And we did see some severe weather reports out of parts of North Carolina. But meanwhile, a lot of ridge riding thunderstorms all around the periphery of this. We have got abundant amount of moisture in the atmosphere in the low levels, especially across so much of the United States, that every day we're going to keep seeing storms like this pop. Now, just to show you what we got over the last 72 hours, we can see why these scattered showers and storms through parts of Virginia and North Carolina in the far southern part of South Carolina. Otherwise, a lot of folks were missed by this and just saw the heat. But look, again, you can see the moisture coming in to the south here and all of the ridge riding storms around the back side of this. In fact, let's just take a look at what some of those severe weather reports look like on Sunday. We had 404 of them, and a lot of them were on these storms coming through parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois. But you remember that boundary kind of hung out right here as it wrapped up into that upper level low that was in the northeast. And we did see some stronger storms. In fact, some of those pushing through the Charlotte region, producing some stronger winds, and a couple of other regions down here where we dotted in some severe wind reports. Okay, winds precipitation coming back. What are we expecting to see in the coming days? Well, right now, early Early in the morning, if you're waking up and you're watching just off to your east, you might see some of these thunderstorms still sitting here uh, off the east coast here uh, of North Carolina. But outside of that, much of our severe weather activity is going to be tucked away back here in the midsection of the country for the next few days. So let's kind of take a look at what I mean here. Throughout the day on uh, Monday, uh, what you're looking at here is wind speeds and the color coding is CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. So we can see the Gulf of Mexico is pu pushing quite a bit of moisture and instability in the atmosphere that's going to come up into the midsection of the country and sit in the boundary right there. Meanwhile, the surface low that you see spinning here off in the northeast, uh, its front is now down in this area. So we, we kind of miss into this section of the United States. Some of the ingredients we're going to be needing for a lot of stronger, se severe storms in the day on Monday. But we, have do we do have storms coming through the forecast here in the coming days. Now, before I get off of this animation, do you see how strong the trade winds are right now? That's a key feature into understanding, which I'll bring up again at the end of this video, why the tropics are shut down right now in the uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. But in the Eastern Pacific, we have Alvin over here uh, still spinning. But again, other side of the uh, of the U.S. here and, and Mexico. So we're not too worried about what Alvin's going to do, of course, to the Carolinas. Okay, let's get in to see what the Storm Prediction Center is saying. This is for the day on Monday over here. We can see that overall, our main corridor for stronger to severe storms is in the midsection of the country, not over the Carolinas. As we get into the day on Tuesday, this is where we start to see every day for the rest of the week, a risk of thunderstorms across uh, the, the uh, North Carolina and South Carolina as we progress, like I said, through the next several days here. I'm going to talk to you about some of the uh, bigger picture details of that in a few seconds. Just animating forward, it's really going to be to the south and west of North Carolina that over the next 36 hours, we're seeing scattered showers and thunderstorms, and it'll certainly be back in the central part of the United States. But I think we start off the week hot, but uh, avoiding some of the, the, you know, the more severe weather. May get a pop-up shower or thunderstorms as you, as you can see here in this animation but nothing organized and widespread okay this is where we got to get though over the next seven days i got you all the way out here to next monday morning 
can you kind of see this corridor right in through here? We're in the middle. We're just seeing a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity. Right now, we can see from the European model that parts of North Carolina could be picking up between an inch and an inch and a half of rain over the next week alone. And this continues into week two. This is only looking at week two precipitation anomalies. And we can see here that uh, parts of North and South Carolina still hang on to the wetter bias moving forward into week two. So what's driving this? What are some of the bigger things we need to look out for? And let's start off first by talking about temperatures. Starting you with what your high temperatures are expected to be on Monday, this is from the National Digital Forecast Database. You can see that through the first three days, we're getting pretty warm. So Monday temperatures here in the lower to mid 90s. Look, Tuesday, now we're talking about temperatures getting into the mid 90s in parts of North Carolina. And as I get you into Wednesday, this might be the hottest day of the week here. Uh, we've got high temperatures in the afternoon approaching the triple digit mark again. What about the 4th of July? Well, as we slide into the 4th of July, we're still going to be a hot and muggy uh, day here with temperatures in the middle to upper. 90s but watch as I get past this we kind of go back more towards seasonable temperatures low 90s here that's uh, Saturday getting you into Sunday so we have some pretty sizable heat coming in in the midsection I'm sorry the middle of this upcoming week and we got to understand what's driving that just to kind of show you in a bit of a little bit more general terms here I got your next five days over here on the right we do see that we carry that warm bias across the southeast as we get into day six through ten we're still hanging on to warm so a season that started off warm we've had a rapid accumulation of green degree day units we're going to continue to stay on the warmer side of this thing which is going to keep a lot lot of our crops really grow, uh, growing and going if we got the moisture in place. Looking out here to days 11 through 15, I've got on the left the European model and on the right the GFS. While we do in general see this area of the United States hanging on to its warmer bias, there's a deeper upper level trough that's coming into this area sweeping in some cooler conditions. And we're going to have to see how far to uh, toward the East Coast we get those cooler conditions in place. Again, that's looking out there pretty far to the 11 to 15 day time period. Now to show you why that's happening, I'm going to animate for you the flow of the atmosphere, so troughs and ridges. And we see that with time, it's the Pacific Ocean that's really dominating how things are going to be playing out here. And let me show you what I'm talking about. We know that over the next several days, this ridge, look at this, this is Wednesday into Thursday, we see this ridge in general across the East Coast. That's what's keeping things quite warm. It's also keeping the moisture in place for the storms to erupt middle and uh, through the end of the week. But as I get you out here now to the end of the week, this is Friday. Friday into Saturday and Sunday. What I want you to pay attention to is what's going on here in the Pacific. We have this high or low pattern that's starting in Alaska going south of the Aleutian Islands. And what that's going to allow to have happen is look over parts of the Hudson Bay as we get out to the 9th, 10th, and 11th. There it is. That's the broader trough that sweeps into this area. That's why you saw it was only the southeast the Gulf Coast getting over into the four corner states and up into the West Coast that has the warmer conditions. Cooler air is going to be tucked into this area. And again, we're going to have to figure out how, uh, you know, how that gets us over toward possibly seeing more seasonable temperatures in North Carolina. Although right now I'm expecting the, a carryover to the warmer bias. Here's another thing to look out for. This particular pattern has northwest flow coming out of the central United States into some of the Corn Belt and Great Lakes states. And why I talk about that is we can often get these squall lines that just come racing here from the northwest to the southeast. And we're going to have to be on the lookout for those in our week two time period. Okay, so keep a close eye out on that. Now, when it comes to figuring out precipitation, I want you to watch the high pressure systems. Remember, we're going to start off with, in general, higher atmospheric pressure over North Carolina here. And we're going to see the Bermuda High really setting up in this area. Now, that will be toward the middle of the week. So high pressure in control today on Monday. As we press forward, let's just pause it right there. I just took you Monday into Tuesday. You see high pressure is in place. There it is. That's why the start of this week is going to be hot and relatively dry. But by the time we get to the middle of the week, the high moves here. And that feeds moisture around this. And what you're going to see as I click play here is this is Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. Okay, sorry, Wednesday evening. You're just going to see flashes of green showing up in the eastern half of the country. So let's do it again. Ready? This is, uh, this is now uh, really early in the morning on Thursday. Thursday around 6 a.m., Thursday afternoon, 
Thursday evening. See it popping there? This is our risk of thunderstorms that comes in on all the moisture being fed around that Bermuda high. Now watch what happens as we get into the weekend. If you don't mind, I'm going to get rid of these drawings real quick. Let me take you into your weekend. So this is Thursday night. Look, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, Friday evening, more storms. As we get into the weekend, see the high pressure cell that's sitting here on the US Canada border? Watch that thing slide toward us. This is now Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, more storms. You can see that all across the Carolinas. But that high comes through, pushes a front toward us in the Carolinas by Sunday. And then early next week, yeah, get in there, tries to clear us out for Tuesday and a Wednesday. So basically starting this Wednesday to next Tuesday, every single day, a chance of storms on that heat, which you saw a few moments ago. Then maybe some clearing by next Wednesday as that high pressure cell moves in. But it's summertime. We expect the atmosphere to pop just like this. What about the tropics? Well, the National Hurricane Center is not watching anything over the next five days. That's because a lot of the action is happening over here. When you see these maps, look for these colors. That tells me where the upper levels of the atmosphere are uh, in a favorable configuration for uh, support of tropical activity. What I'm starting to get concerned at is that by the time we get to week two, we see some of that moving here over into uh, parts of the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and the main development region for the Atlantic. Now, remember, last week we had a lot of dust coming off of the Sahara. We have very strong winds, very strong trade winds right now, and some pretty deep wind shear. So the dust... The strong trade winds and the deep wind shear work against tropical activity, but the upper levels of the atmosphere by the time we get into week two, so here we are talking about the second week of July, starting to look a little bit more favorable for some development here uh, in the Atlantic. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on that moving forward, okay? What I want to do to finish this up is take you quickly abroad. We're watching for a corridor stretching from Spain through France, Germany, Poland, over into parts of Russia here. We're especially right in through this area in Germany and Poland. We're expecting to have a decent chance today of seeing some nasty, nasty th thunderstorms. Outside of that, over the next week, a very warm bias in southern Europe and through here, while much of northern Europe getting over into the Russian wheat belt, which is in this area, is looking cooler than average. Now, what about temperatures? Northern France, much of Germany, the little line I just drew there, that area is expected to stay dry over the coming week as a lot of our stronger storms are going to be south of there. But just to show you, here's the Black Sea. We can see that parts of the Russian wheat belt getting some rainfall, parts of Ukraine getting some rainfall over the next week as well. So that's going to maybe possibly drive some of the market story we might have with some of our grains. So I wanted to keep you aware of that. But just quick to finish up this international view of things, I want to let you know the Indian monsoon is now starting to go. So we can see that some parts of India over the next uh, week may get, now this is in the model here, but maybe picking up 20 inches of rainfall, but that can happen with the monsoon. But when you look over here at the map that is on the right, I want you to focus in on this region in China and that region in China. That's China's two main growing areas. And as you can see, that is the cropland color here. Now, what do I want you to see over the next week? Very dry in China's southern growing area, but wet in the northern growing area. So we're going to keep a close eye on those two regions as well as there's big time production there. And we just need to keep that international perspective throughout the rest of our summer here as it does play in our market prices. So hopefully that gives you the bigger picture of what's going on with your weather here across the Carolinas and across the world. And with that, I'll go ahead and wrap it up right there. We at Nutrient Ag Solutions and at the Farm Credit Associations of North Carolina, thank you for your attention and we hope you look forward to next week's Ag Forecast video. Have a great week, a safe and happy 4th of July because you might get some natural fireworks out of it this week. Talk to you soon. Thank you.